What's up guys, Thomas Alex Norman here, and in this video we have a huge big demonstration for you guys. Uh, I've been doing them in forests and beaches and stuff, and you guys wanted to see a, a city, like a more urban environment of how I get shots in the streets, in the city. Uh, we are fortunately in the very beautiful San Sebastian today, so there is a lot of nice architecture to get. But don't get discouraged by that if you're in somewhere that is slightly less picturesque. You can still apply these techniques and make a really cool video in a different style, in a different location. So. The first thing we're going to do is get a shot of this really nice street behind me here. So what I'm going to do is set everything up here, try and get it very, very central and symmetrical, because that always looks good when you have symmetry on either side. And I'm going to push forward from a kind of a low angle to get this street here. And what we can do now is boom, punch in like that, continue exactly the same camera movement. And that's going to give us a really nice way to be able to cut between those two shots from a Y and bam, punching into a more close shot. There's a lot of kind of details in the architecture here. There's this cool kind of lamp post like that. I might get this one quickly and we can kind of, uh, we can zoom out a little bit and come around in this kind of rotational motion. Because I like to get some detail shots as well as the, um, the more kind of grand opening shots. I'm gonna try a slightly different angle there as well. Cool, that looks pretty good. Up here you can see we've got some really nice balconies. Um, I think with these balcony shots, what looks cool quite a lot of the time is to get them from kind of straight on to kind of straight and close. So I'm gonna go here and just go literally opposite these balconies. I mean, if we just film like this, it's kind of dull. So always try and find a way to spice it up. And what I'm gonna do here, if you guys remember from a couple of videos ago, we were talking about including foreground elements. So having this tree there really does help. And maybe we can use this tree as a wipe in a second. So we can kind of go from left to right here, wipe across with the tree as best as we can. And that way we can maybe use that as a wipe transition with something else. We can also do the opposite and come out from the tree to get the shot of the building like this. And that could be a really cool way to transition between the shots. Let's see. Up here we've got uh, a huge cathedral. So again, what we can do is get a really nice wide shot of that. And it's super symmetrical, this street here, so it's really perfect to just get a nice, simple shot. Again, punching forward like that. That looks really cool. And we can apply the same technique. I really like what we did before. And then we can do the same movement and that's gonna match really nicely in the cut. And this one, rather than emphasizing the streets, emphasizes the cathedral a lot more as kind of the subject, and brings it closer into our attention. Also, whilst you're filming, it's a really cool idea to be thinking about the theme of your video and what your video is actually going to look like. You know? Is this video going to be some kind of dark, wintry video? Is this video going to be something that's to some nice acoustic music? And you know, you, you've got to kind of have that in mind to help you direct your shots. And what I'm thinking with this one is it's going to be, because we've got clouds, it's not like a super bright, sunny day. Um, and we've got a little beautiful architecture in this urban environment with clouds. I'm thinking this is going to be a slightly more kind of moody video. Um, and I think that's going to work really nicely. So I've got that in mind for when I'm getting my shots. So what we've got here is a really, really cool shot. I have no idea what to call these different architectural things, but you've got a block. I'm going to call it a block. You've got a block here, a block here, and a tower in the background. And what those things can do if we zoom in is they can kind of move across each other in a really nice way. Here it'd be perfect to have a gimbal, to be honest, to get to emphasize this even more. Maybe in a, a, a spinning motion. So do one of these kind of trippy shots, spinning around to reveal the tower. And in these shots, I'm always thinking how I'm gonna link these together with the other footage I've already got. So I know that I've got a shot of the street, I've got a shot of the cathedral, and that's gonna cut really nicely to a close-up of the cathedral when I'm kind of spinning around or, or moving in and out to reveal the different elements of it. It's kind of like we're establishing something, then we're getting closer, and then we're getting even closer and showing the details of that thing. Let 
Next up, we've got some gardens here, some nice trees. I like to always, if there is some nature in urban environments, I like to always get it. There's some little flowers and blossom, actually, perfect. We can just get really crisp on them and maybe move into focus. I like doing this with kind of branches and flowers. Let's focus it before and then push into focus. Very hard to get it right though, especially when uh, your subject is high. Cool, that looks good. If not, we can kind of, we can keep them in focus slightly here and do more of a sideways movement so we don't have to get the focus absolutely perfect. Kind of come around slightly. done is we've got a close-up of those flowers but we haven't really had a way to introduce them so like we did with the cathedral we had a wide and then a close this we haven't got any wide yet so I'm always thinking about that and figuring out how I can introduce these trees and what we can do here is maybe just quite simply just get a wide of this tree just kind of calm around kind of like we did the cathedral earlier left to right like that and then from there boom we can cut really easily to those flowers Another one I really like to do of trees as well is get some of the texture of the bark. There you go, so you've got nice textures of the bark there. And we've actually got bits of the, um, the cathedral in that shot as well. So it all links together really nicely. Up here we've got more balconies and we used a tree to do like a mask transition earlier. Oh, yeah. So what I might do is use another tree to do the same thing. So we can kind of cut between the balconies here using this wipe transition to so give ourselves two options again. First option is going to be coming into the tree. So then this would be the first shot. And then the second option is coming out from the tree. So this would be our second shot if we used it like this. Cool. Could be a good way to use a little transition there. We'll see what happens in the edit. Stick around to the end for that. This right here is pretty amazing too. Just got more of the cathedral. Don't want to film the cathedral too much because I don't just want to make a video about one building, but it's always better to get more shots and I can always just use the best ones in the edit if I find that there's too much of this building in there. But man, it's super beautiful like that. And there's a little bit of blue skies ahead actually as well, which looks sick. So coming left to right here, like that is perfect. Come up like this and get some of the details of the building too. If you kind of get stuff in the foreground whilst looking at background stuff, it really kind of puts the viewer in your shoes. For whatever reason, having something kind of here and then looking up through that, it really kind of looks like you're there and looking at it rather than just having the background as like a flat thing. So, we're almost there. Just gonna get a couple more shots. There's a fountain up here, so we'll go this way and get some stuff of the fountain. What I really like to do sometimes is from the floor, getting shots that are really close and having the, four, the floor there right in the shot. And just keeping a still shot here could look really nice. I've got the fountain there and the rule of thirds right on that corner. Sometimes when you get a still shot, they don't look the best if every other shot in your video is moving. So if you just throw in a still shot, it can be kind of jarring. So when I do that, sometimes you can add some uh, like Ken Burns effect, so that means basically um, you're doing some digital movement, so you scale in and then you start moving it within your program like by using keyframes. And that stuff can make it kind of blend in a little bit better, so we'll see if we do that with this one. And we've actually got some really nice light hitting this building here as well, which looks amazing. So that, I reckon, is perfect for a shot going left to right. Because then we've got these trees that are going to go 
move a little bit in the foreground with the fountain nice in the shot there and the building. Beautiful. Might do a punch into that as well. Amazing. Really like that shot, really happy with that. Sometimes it's not even the, the skills of the filmmaker, it's just like what appears in front of you. And if you get, oh wow, look, a building with a nice light, suddenly it can be your, the best shot in the video that you made. Um, but it's about having the skills to recognize those opportunities and capture them in the best way. What I can do now is get the same shot of the fountains there and the building, but from a completely different angle. Get a couple more shots like this. I'm gonna change my camera settings to uh, 120 frames per second. And that's gonna enable me to get a really slow motion shot of this water going past. Breaking all the rules, probably getting my camera wet. Finally, just to get a last shot, got a super nice bridge up here. You can get the people in the cars going past. This could be a good finishing shot, actually. It's not always in order. Like, we don't always start the edit with the first shots and then finish the edit with the last shots. But for whatever reason, this has worked quite well, and I think we will start over there and we'll probably finish the video here. Just because we kind of got a sunsetty looking sky and it kind of looks open. And we have everything in slow-mo here as well. So I think it's a nice way. Another way you can end it as well is do the opposite of the push in and actually pull out like this. We were going into the video like this, we were coming in, we were going for a journey, and then the final shot is us kind of going out and saying goodbye to the video like that in a way. It's quite a nice way to end it um, if you're looking for ways to end videos there. Um, but yeah, that was it. Here I'm gonna show you the edit of the video all together. Uh, we're probably gonna stabilize a lot of these clips, put the appropriate ones in slow motion. We're gonna color grade it, add some sound design, which is really important, add some music, and you'll see the result now. So I really hope you can see how that all came together in the edit there. Um, and just see how you can get really nice shots in an urban environment. You don't have to be anywhere special to get these nice shots. You can just get them from wherever you are, in whatever city that you're in. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Thank you again to Raul, who is filming this video. You can check his stuff out in the description below, his corporate and also wedding videos. Give him a hire. And also, you can check out my gear list. That is where you will get a free list of gear sent straight to your inbox, the gear that I use, and also the gear that you can use as a beginner starting out in your travel filmmaking journey. Thanks very much for watching. Give this video a like, subscribe, and until next time, keep filming. Bye-bye.